Let's look. Am I using this right? Uh, you gonna do it again? No, that's, that's it. Yeah. Welcome back to the channel. As you can see laid out here on the table, I have all kind of measuring devices. And I might be a little bit of a measuring goofball, a little bit of a nerd. Call me whatever you want, leave it in the comments. I'm cool with it. But today I just wanted to kind of go through and show you how I measure some things. And I do think there's a lot of people in the industry that are doing a lot more measuring and that's great. It's really important to uh, keep all our stuff consistent. The granite surface plate is the base for a lot of our measuring that we do here. And it's a super flat surface. The lowest grade granite you can get is grade B and it's flat within three ten thousandths of an inch. And for what we're doing in our world, that's plenty good enough. That's considered tool room grade so if it's flat enough for tool room guys, it's flat enough for the golf course. You can find these anywhere from $200 on Facebook Marketplace to $6,000 for a new pink granite um, three by four surface plate like I got here. I picked this up on Facebook Marketplace. A guy was moving, a machinist, didn't want to take it with him, and I got it for a steal. And I've just started collecting tools over the years and when I want to measure something I just decide do I need a new tool for that because I'm a tool junkie and I have some hoarding tendencies. Um, the next thing is gauge blocks. So this is a whole gauge block set. These are just so handy for all kind of things because they're in one thousandths increments even down to 10,000 increments. And you can basically build any height that you needed to gauge something. And what I use these for is if I'm measuring a bed knife and I'm trying to get the bed knife parallel to my surface plate, I'll use the gauge blocks to get make it parallel because there's so many different sizes. So if you need something that's a thousand thicker, you got it if you have a gauge block set. Uh, moving on to uh, bevel protractor, if you need to measure any kind of angles. Uh, I've measured the angle from the bed knife is standing up the grass. Measure that angle. Um, that's a whole nother video that we might do later about what angle that should be according to one of the Toro engineers. So you can measure that with something like this. Uh, one of the handiest tools that most of us probably have and use a lot is calipers, whether they be veneer calipers or digital calipers. Uh, you can get these, you know, anywhere pretty much. And brand, I don't think, matters that much. I will say these are Mitatoya, and that's a, a good Japanese company. Starrett, obviously, is here in the U.S., some of the stuff, like I had a pair I bought from Harbor Freight and it's really hard to get them to move, uh, you know. So it, it's kind of a pain. You get what you pay for, I do think, um, when it comes to these tools. Uh, caliper. A few moments later. A micrometer. And this one has the nice clutch on the end. Hopefully the microphone's picking it up, hearing it click there. And uh, it's also digital too. Uh, these are super handy. I'm not a machinist. I do have some machine tools and machinists say these are a better way to measure stuff than a caliper, but I'll leave that debate up to the viewers and you can tell me what you think in the comments. Tell me I'm a knucklehead. That's okay. So since I do use uh, some or do some machine work, I have a set of uh, parallels. So these are made to go in a vise in the, on the milling machine, milling machine vise, and you put your work up here on top of these and they keep it parallel to the table for doing different milling operations. But these are super handy because they're precision ground and these are an eighth of an inch. So if I needed to stack a couple of these together, 
something like that, um, I could. And I know the height of these also, which, because they're precision ground. And just like, for instance, this is an eighth inch by one and three eighths, and it's six inches long. So these are really good references, and they're a lot cheaper than a gauge block set. So dial indicator, we are all familiar with this if we work around the golf course very long because this is what we're using to set our how to cut on our cutting units. Uh, something like this with a magnetic base and the dial indicator handy for measuring run out on a shaft or run out on brake rotors. A lot of different uses for that tool. Here's a, a depth gauge. So it works a lot like the, the caliper. The caliper also has a depth gauge coming out of it. But this one uh, has a T, so you can put it up against something like a precision straight edge and measure whatever you're measuring. So another, uh, this measures 200 thousandths of an inch and it only goes in one direction. This is another one. It goes in both directions and it reads in tenths back and forth. Sometimes you need to measure some stuff on engine components and check tolerances. One more thing. So height gauge, we're going to be using this to measure the height of this reel later on in this, in this video. Just uh, all kind of different stuff <laughs> that I've collected over the years. Even uh, one, two, three blocks. This is another machinist thing. These are super handy too because uh, they're machined to a tight tolerance and it's one inch, two inch, and three inch. And I also have a set of precision ground V-blocks. So uh, any kind of shaft or round object that I want to measure on, I'm usually gonna put it in the V-block. And I'll use the one, two, three blocks to raise up the V-block depending on the diameter of whatever I'm working on. So now, let's get to measuring something. So the first thing we're gonna measure is a reel diameter. And this is a brand new Toro reel that is really old, but it's never been used. So I just pulled it out of the box. Um, it's been sitting on the shelf. It goes to an old Flex 2100 uh, machine and we're gonna measure it. And we're gonna show you some different ways to measure it. But most of y'all are probably familiar with the pie tape and that's what a lot of us use to measure real diameter and I think it's a great tool to do that with. But some things we noticed about it is it stretches and we're just gonna prove that to you right now. And we have an old tape and a brand new tape. So we're gonna see if there's any discrepancies between the two and also use these other ways of measuring. So this is our test setup. I have our vise out of our drill press and I have the pie tape clamped into the vise. The vise is up against the granite surface plate and we're going to mark our tape measure. We're gonna, this is an old pie tape that has been around. It's got a bunch of wrinkles in it. We're gonna pull it tight and mark the last uh, mark on the pie tape. Then we're gonna see how much we can get it to stretch. So if I pull this tight, I'm getting about 25 thousandths. It almost moves a full mark. So we did the math. If we had a five inch reel and we divide that by pi, that gives us a number. If we had a five point, if we were able to stretch this and it measures 5.025 and divide that by pi, the difference is eight thousandths of an inch. So a little over, almost three human hairs. Is that gonna affect anything? I don't think so. I'm not worried about it, but it does stretch. So brand new pie tape here, never been used. 
just to unbox this thing. And I got it pulled tight, it's straight. I'm gonna mark the last mark. So this one, maybe it moves three quarters of the way, so 20 thousandths ish, 18, 20 thousandths, something like that. It definitely doesn't stretch as much as the old one. And I do think that is contributed to all the wrinkles that was put in the old one from misuse by us. Ready to measure, measure some reels with a pie tape? Yeah, so I'm gonna take and measure this reel diameter with this old pie tape. Let's see what our reading is. So this is reading five, 19. So five inches, 0 0.019. So it was five inches, point zero one nine. Now I'm gonna measure with the new pie tape. Five point zero one two two. Two two. Is that what you're seeing? Mm -hmm. You're probably seeing it better than me. <laughs> so the difference there is three thousandths from the old one that's got all the crinkles in it and the brand new one that looks perfect. So within a human hair between the two. So next I'm going to measure with a caliper, just using the depth gauge and measure from the real blade to the real shaft. And that's something that's been around forever and it's a real quick, easy, dirty way of getting a ballpark reel diameter. But I do kind of want to see in this video, how close can we get to the actual diameter? And on the pie tape, we wrote our numbers down. We'll do the math and uh, show you what our actual, or what the pie tape actual diameter is versus caliper actual diameter and the height gauge. All right, so I'm using the depth gauge on the caliper here, and I'm gonna go from the edge of the real blade, and I wanna keep this just, you know, I'm on the surface plate here, and I wanna keep it, you know, perpendicular to the surface plate. I wanna make sure that I'm on a good part of the reel shaft, you know, so I'm gonna turn the reel a little bit. I was on a weld there. Don't wanna be on a weld. So I got my caliper perpendicular to the real blade. I'm gonna move the depth gauge in and see what our number is here. And I like to kind of move it around a little bit and just see and find my lowest number. And I know there I'm at the lowest point of the real shaft. I measured from the real blade to the real shaft. I found that's one inch point nine seven zero. I'm going to multiply that times two, then add the real shaft diameter. So this real shaft is 1.125. Gives us a diameter of 5.065. So is the pie tape the correct number or is the caliper the correct number? I don't know. If I had to guess, I would lean towards the pie tape being more accurate than the caliper because it is a little tricky getting the caliper perpendicular and holding it straight and hitting the real shaft, you know, all those things. A, a lot of things that could go wrong with the caliper. And the pie tape, even though it stretches a little bit, it should get us pretty close. So if I just had to take a guess, I would say pie tape is gonna be the more accurate reading. Now we're gonna use the height gauge. So now I have the reel setting on the granite surface plate and I'm gonna use the height gauge. All this does, it has a flat machine base and a scale on it. So, you know, similar veneer scale is what we had on the, the pie tape. They make these in digital, and but those are really expensive. So I just want to find 
my, the high point of my reel, I got a little drag right over the spider there. If I needed to adjust this down a little bit, I can, this is our fine adjustment here. Just a little drag. Now it's actually uh, removing just a little paint. These have a carbide tip in the end. The drag on the reel is about like a filler gauge. So that's, that's kind of what I'm feeling for. And I'm gonna read and see what the height says. So on my veneer scale, here's my five inch mark. This would be five inches and 50 thousandths is this first little tick mark. This would be 5.1. My zero is in between 5050 and 5.1. So my veneer scale goes up to 50 here. I'm gonna go up the veneer scale and find the first number that matches and it's 15. So I'm gonna add 15 thousandths to 50 thousandths for a grand total of 5.065. So our height gauge is five inches, 0 0.065. So the outcome that I thought we would have didn't happen. So the height gauge says the real diameter is 5.065. The caliper said the real diameter is 5.065. One pie tape, if we take the average of the two pie tapes, two pi tape readings, it would say 5.091 would be the average. One of them was 89, one of them was 92. So it's off by uh, almost 30 thousandths, the pi tape with a bigger reading. So it says the reel is bigger than the actual number. Does that matter? I don't think so. And the biggest thing we need to know is the reel cone or not. Um, we do need to know when the reel gets close. If we're running John Deere reels, we need to know if the reel gets close to 4.5 in diameter because we need to flip our cam and change our roller setting on a John Deere. But on Toro, it don't matter. Um, would I take this out in the field and measure something with it? Probably not. Would I take a pie tape in the field? Sure. Would I take a caliper in the field? Sure. But I'm not taking one of these. I'm not saying you have to measure at this level. This could be overkill for a lot of us, but I do think it's a good tool to have in your toolbox. I think it's important to know how to use these building blocks. And maybe now you're at a lower end club and you would never use this stuff. But what when you go to somewhere else, when you get a promotion or you move and you go to another course, maybe you need some of these skills. I think it's important to know when we need to use a Home Depot tape measure and a caliper. Sometimes we need a more accurate measurement and it really depends on what the manufacturer is giving us. If they're giving us measurements in the thousands, we probably need to measure in the thousands and we don't need to use a tape measure. So I hope you found this helpful. Leave me some comments. Let me know if you liked it, if you didn't, and what else you want us to do or if there's other certain things you want us to focus on on how to measure, let us know. See you, bye. <laughs> you wanna do that? I don't care. I'll wrap this thing around. Let's see. Am I using this right? Genius. I don't know. Is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You want to do it again? No, that's, that's it. Yeah.